Welcome back to CTF365. My name is Chris, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to Metasploitable, which is a vulnerable by design server. And what that means is the server was intentionally given weaknesses to allow people like yourself to gain experience in both identifying and exploiting common vulnerabilities. Now to be more specific, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to exploit a misconfigured NFS service to gain root access to the Metasploitable server. Before we begin, I'd like to explain what NFS is and what it's used for. NFS stands for Network File System, and it's a client server system that allows clients to access shared files over a network. It works by allowing the client to mount the shared directory on their own system and then access that directory as if it were stored locally. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to access that shared file system, and then we're going to add our private SSH key to the authorized keys file, which as a result will allow us to access the made exploitable server via SSH. And at the end of this tutorial, I'll discuss some of the implications that this vulnerability has, and I'll highlight some of the ways that this type of attack can be prevented. So let's go ahead and get started. In order to access the made exploitable server, we need to be connected to the CTF365 VPN. So if you haven't already done that, go ahead and take a moment to do it now. And if you don't know how to set up your VPN connection, I've created two OS specific tutorials that will show you, and I'll add the links to those videos in the description below. Once we've connected to the CTF365 VPN, we need to open a terminal. And what we're going to do is we're going to scan the Metasploitable server with Nmap to identify which ports are open and which services are running. This is how we're going to discover the NFS service. And I want to point out that when performing a penetration test in a professional environment, this process is referred to as reconnaissance. And the purpose is to gather intelligence on our target, which we can then use to perform a vulnerability assessment and eventually an exploit. So with that said, let's go ahead and scan the made exploitable server. And to begin the scan, we need to type nmap space tac s uppercase s space. And then we need to enter the made exploitable server's IP address, which is 10.195.2.2 and then press enter. And while nmap is working, I want to take a moment to explain something. You'll notice that I gave you the made exploitable server's IP address. You may be given the IP address of a specific target in some scenarios, but other times you may be required to discover the target on your own. In fact, you may be required to discover several targets, and you would accomplish this by using nmap to scan the entire network. Then, once you find some devices on the network, you can narrow your nmap scan to target each device on an individual basis, and this will give you more comprehensive results as you're seeing here. So if you look at the nmap results, you'll notice that NFS is running on port 2049. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a closer look at the NFS service to see what's going on. So let's type RPC info space tac p space and then we're going to enter the made exploitable server's IP address again. It's 10.195.2.2 and then press enter. And you should see the following list of daemons and services. I don't have time to explain the function of each one, but I will tell you this. NFS is available and potentially exploitable. Now that we've confirmed the availability, let's see if we can find out which directory the NFS server is sharing. And to do this, we need to type show mount space tac e space, and then we're going to enter the made exploitable server's IP address again. It's 10.195.2.2, and then press enter. And the forward slash asterisk symbolizes the root directory. Now let's see if we can mount that directory on our local system. First, we need to create a temporary directory, which is where we'll place the mount. So let's type mkdir space forward slash tmp forward slash nfs and then press enter. And what we just did here is we created a directory called nfs. Now we can try to mount the shared directory. And to do this, we need to type mount space tac o space no lock space tac t space nfs space 10.195.2.2 colon forward slash space forward slash tmp forward slash nfs and that's simply saying that we want to mount the root directory of the made exploitable server into our nfs directory once we've entered that command we could press enter and we'll give it a moment to see if it mounts Okay, and we have successfully mounted the shared directory and we didn't need any credentials to do so. This means that we have root access to the made exploitable server. And now we're going to use that root access to add our private SSH key to the authorized keys file. Now to ensure everyone can do this, we're going to generate a new SSH key first. So let's type SSH 
TAC keygen, and then press enter. And when prompted to enter a location to store your SSH key, simply press enter to use the default location and file name. And I want to point out that if you're prompted to overwrite your existing SSH key, go ahead and type Y and press enter. And then you'll receive this prompt asking you to enter a passphrase. Just leave it blank and press enter. And then you'll be prompted to confirm your passphrase. Again, leave it blank and press enter. And now we're ready to place our SSH key in the Made Exploitable Server's authorized keys file. So let's type cat space dot SSH forward slash ID underscore RSA dot pub space forward arrow forward arrow space forward slash TMP forward slash NFS forward slash root forward slash dot SSH forward slash authorize underscore keys and then press enter. And now we can unmount the shared directory and access the made exploitable server via SSH. To unmount the shared directory, we need to type umount space forward slash TMP forward slash NFS and press enter. And finally, we can connect via SSH. So let's type SSH space root at, and then we're going to enter the made exploitable server's IP address 10.195.2.2 and then press enter. And when you're prompted to confirm the connection, type yes and press enter. And you can see that we now have root access to the made exploitable server. From here, we can begin further exploring the server and we can begin further exploiting it. Now, before I conclude the tutorial, I want to explain a couple of ways that this attack could have been prevented. As you saw, we weren't required to enter any credentials to connect to the NFS server. If I were the system administrator, I could have prevented this by creating users and groups, assigning appropriate privileges to those users and groups, and setting up an authentication and encryption system. Also, you saw that we were able to mount the root directory. Again, if I were the system administrator, I would never have used the root directory as the mount point. There are better, more secure ways to give root access to a user. NFS really should be used to share a specific directory that contains specific files. For example, it would be relevant to use NFS for the purpose of sharing project files during a team collaboration or something along those lines. So that concludes this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please visit our blog at blog.ctf365.com.